Rain Games Teslagrad has, at long last, finally come to the Wii U, but was it worth the wait? The answer to that is a resounding yes. The game is positively brilliant, and nails everything it sets out to do, from the unique visuals to the ambient music to the elegant gameplay. One of the first things you'll notice is the presentation. The game is positively gorgeous. It looks like a beautiful cartoon, with exquisite environments, charming character design, and a remarkably unique animation. It goes a long way in making this game feel like a unique and stunning experience. Complementing that is the music. Though very much in the background, it's still beautiful. The music is not memorable, per se, but the ambience is perfectly executed here. The story is presented without any dialogue or text. It's done through small cutscenes and optional skits that you can watch throughout the world. The simple story is presented endearingly, and you'll definitely want to watch the cutscenes too, if nothing else, see how cool they all look, as well as help to fill you in a bit on what the story is. But it's the gameplay where Tesla Grad really shines. Within seconds of starting the game, you gain control of your character, learning the basics of play. Use the control stick or d-pad to move. Running into or jumping near a ledge will have your character automatically climb it. You can also fully climb some walls. And that's about it for the beginning. But this is a Metroidvania title, so of course you will be able to do much more than that by the end. Most of Teslagrad will be spent exploring. You go through different rooms, gaining new abilities to access new areas. The exploration is, thankfully, very streamlined. You won't find yourself getting lost, and it's clear where to go. The world is one massive tower that, for the most part, you continuously go up, with rooms branching out to the sides here and there. So backtracking is a breeze as it's remarkably easy to understand where everything is. The most fun parts of the game are the rooms themselves. In them, you'll find puzzle platforming challenges. Most have to do with magnets, finding ways to change certain blocks in yourself to have the proper charge to be attracted to or repelled by other magnets, and therefore find ways to traverse the environment. In addition to a few items that can change other objects in yourself magnetically, you'll gain the ability to teleport a small distance to the right or left, so you can bypass certain walls, enemies, and hazards. These few abilities combine to make for a large variety of clever puzzles. It's amazingly fun. All the puzzles are immensely satisfying to complete, and even the hardest ones never feel unfair. The platforming element to them is great as well. The controls work splendidly, and it's easy to tell what your actions will accomplish, so if you die, it's always your fault. Fortunately, there are save points constantly, so if you die, you can get right back to the challenge you failed on and try again within moments. Occasionally, there are bosses, and these are, quite surprisingly, absolutely brilliant. Each has a different, unique way to fight them, all of them forcing you to use a different one of your abilities. For a game that is focused on anything but combat, these bosses are remarkably fun. It's always a blast to figure out how to take them down and how to avoid their attacks. They are quite challenging, too, and always offer a great change of pace from the usual slower-paced platforming. The gamepad is used pretty lightly here. The map is always down on the controller, which is great for convenience, and keeping the game itself feeling more cinematic. And then off-TV play is available, which is great as always for those who like to use that option. There are a few issues with the game, however. For starters, I found there to be frame rate dips fairly often. They never got in the way, but in one central room in particular, it did get a bit annoying. And then there's the fact that if you hit an enemy or obstacle, you die instantly. For the most part, this is fine, but on the rare occasion that the save points are pretty far apart, and if this section is particularly tricky, it can feel a little unfair. And then towards the end of the game, you need to find a certain amount of collectibles to continue. If you found them during your main playthrough, you'll be fine, as you do not need a ton to progress through the main quest, but having to re-explore the world to find collectibles can be a bit annoying when it is mandatory. But in the end, these issues don't feel important. Teslagrad is a beautiful, stunning, wonderful journey. The visuals are brilliant, the music is beautiful, and the story is enjoyable to watch play out. The puzzles and platforming are genius, and the exploration is seamless. Rain Games has created an absolute masterpiece, one that stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in its genre, and for just $15, it's more than worth picking up.